Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we will discuss about the Terraform documentations on the Terraform website. Terraform has a very rich and easy documentation to follow by any of the developers. So if you want to learn and configure your infrastructure in Terraform with any of the cloud provider, then Terraform is going to be, Terraform documentation is going to be very, very useful. Today in this video, I'll walk you through how do you understand or read, how do you follow the Terraform documentation to write your code or to set up your understanding as a developer. For this, simply I will type Azure provider, Terraform Azure provider, and I should go to the registry.terraform.io, which is our docs overview for the Azure. As you can see that we are onto the same page where we have discussed about the authentication option. Now, this is the overall Azure RM providers documentation. So if I go back to the root of this particular page, you will find all the different types of provider. Let's say if I need to provision the resources in AWS, then I can go to the AWS and then go to the documentation of the AWS and all the resources which I can provision in AWS uh, with Terraform are available here. Similarly, currently I am into Azure RM provider. So any resources which I can provision within Azure with Terraform are listed down here. And this is the base page where you have the information about how do you configure the provider which we have already discussed in our previous video so i'll not go into the detail of the provider's documentation but let's take an example let's discuss about this left side of the tree here on the left side we have a tree view for the different resource type so we have a logical grouping of the resource in which you can find the information of any specific type of resource. So, for example, this is a general guide of how do you authenticate to a different, uh, different ways to authenticate to your Azure RM provider. Then you have the different uh, resources related to API management, Active Directory, App Services, and so on and so on. It's a, it is an alphabetical group of resources which are listed down here on the left side and now if i expand any of the sam sample logical group which is let's say app service which is the simplest resource which we can provision right now so let's open this this app service itself or any resource in terraform is been categorized into two sub categories one is a resource type and then other one is the data source type the resource types are the type of resources which you would like to provision from Terraform to your Azure environment. Similarly, the data source is the block of resources which you would like to read in your Terraform code from your Azure environment. If you would like to write a resource from Terraform to Azure environment, refer this resource block. If you want to read something from Azure to your Terraform code, whether it is created by your Terraform code itself or it is created externally by manual configuration, for example, or some other form of automation. If you want to read that uh, resource, then you can refer the data source block. So for example, in this case, if I would like to write or create a new app service plan or any configuration related to app service or web app, then I should go to resource block. If I would like to read an existing configuration related to a existing app service or web app, then I should find out the existing resource uh, data source block here in this particular section. So let's open one of the resource block which we have. So here in the resource block, we have these many configuration available under the app services. So list is quite a big. So Let's take an example of the app service itself. So in order to create an app service, this is how the documentation looks like. Here it says that 
it manages the app service within the app service plan which indicates you that it would require a app service plan as in prerequisite to build the app service right and after that you have the example uses which is very very important example uses are given so simple that you can copy as is and then use it in your source code to provision a resource in your environment if you are learning terraform with azure for the very first time so for example here in the example uses they have given that inside any of the terraform directory in your terraform directory inside any of the dot tf file you can copy these resource for example if you want to create a new resource group copy that because the app service will only be possible to create inside the resource group so you have to have the resource group first so they are saying that if you want to create a resource group copy this block similarly app service we know that can only be created in uh, inside the app service plan so app service plan is needed that's why they are saying that copy this block as well so that you can create a app service plan with this example if you look at here currently the terraform resource group uh, properties are being referred here to provision the app service plan which says that the app service plan will also be created inside the same resource group same similarly you can copy the app service block itself to copy the to provision the app service itself here it has some of the properties such as that location resource group app service plan id and then you have some additional configuration which are defined as the site config application config now you might think that i may not want to create an app service with the similar configuration and this configuration looks to me an hard coded configuration you are right in that sense but this is just an uh, remember that this is just an example given here which proves that how do you write your terraform code to provision the app service plan and app services but if you would like to customize that then this resource block itself has number of properties and what all properties it has that's the document is all about if you look at here the argument reference link so any argument which are being supported with this app service plan is described here for example uh, app service plan would have the argument which is of type required so it needs to have a uh, argument app service name similarly resource group name again it is a required type so whenever you are referring to this argument reference make sure that you pay attention to these first word which is required or optional so if it is required it means that in order to provision that a particular resource you have to have provide a value to that particular attribute similarly a location is also required app service plan id is also required usually what terraform documentation used to do they put try to put all the required type of attribute at the very first place and then any optional option type of attribute which is not mandatory they will try to put it afterwards so if you look at here the app settings as we know that the app settings with the so uh, app service plan may be optional so that's why you don't if you don't want to keep then you don't need to specify the app setting value now you might be thinking that the value or the attribute name is given a little bit description is given whether it is mandatory or not that is also given but what about the the type or the property type of these variables so i think here is something you you have to use your intelligence that to specify name i'm going to anyways use the string uh, similarly resource group i'm going to use a string because it's just a string type location also a string type app service plan id is the resource id of the app service plan so it cannot be the name of the app service plan so it is a resource id of the as this is why it says id which means the resource id of the app service plan now here it says the key value pair of the app settings so you need to specify the map values or the key value pairs of the app settings 
in this case. Now, some of the configuration in which it requires the the complex object settings uh, instead of the key value pair or string or numeric or boolean type of setting if it requires to set up some complex level of settings such as this app settings auth app settings then in terraform documentation you will find the uh, this kind of a description which it says block as defined so you can simply search this and you i'm sure you'll find the information about that specific setting bottom in at the bottom of your documentation so similarly if i quickly scroll down let's say backup as an optional defined below connection and string as defined below so there are so many properties are defined below so if we search here let's say if i search the authentication two options are here which and one of them should be down there so this is a supporting block so the authentication property itself is an object type of property and that is going to be defined as the curly braces uh, authentication then equals to curly braces and then it would have these many possible attributes again the attribute inside a particular settings or the attributes which you are applying that could have some of the required property or some of them could have the optional property so this parent block which is authentication setting itself is not required but if you are willing to set this authentication required property then you have to specify enable and disable property to set the authentication because it is required and then of course you can specify the other optional property as well as you wish right i hope this is making sense i'll take another example for example active directory uh, configuration in your web app right so active directory itself the configuration of active directory in the web app is is optional but if you are willing to set the active directory configuration then you have to specify the client id and secret and audience which are optional right now right so either of these you have to you have to set and it is clearly mentioned that if no secret is provided the implicit flow will be used that's that's one of the you know other uh, option which he, here it is provided that if you are not using that what would be the impact or what would be the alternate connectivity or configuration which will be available to you as in uh, as in result of the you know creating this resource block right now at the last of each and every resource type you would have some generic resource type for example what would be the timeout or and import so import is very important uh, if you would like to import an existing app service resource for in this particular case then you can use the import command which is terraform import and you can provide the uh, resource block which is the terraform uh, the app service resource id to import uh, the resource into your terraform configuration so that is again uh, one of the mandatory thing you will find across any of the cloud provider any across any resource across the cloud provider and that will help you in case if you would like to import and resource right you can simply search any or filter any of the resource if you would like to for example i want to search a resource group resource under group so here under the base section i have a resource group and here in the resource group I can see that only three properties are there one is required name and location is required tags are optional and the attribute section says that what type of property it will return it can return right so th this is what it says now let's take an example other example which is a storage account if that will give you some idea storage account so under the storage if i go to the storage account here it says that there are different type uh, different ways you can define the storage account a storage account as simple a storage account with networking rule so two examples are given then you have the argument references for the different storage account properties later on if you scroll it down at the bottom you will see that what all different attributes it can return 
which is known as the attribute reference as of now so it says that as in a storage account it can return id primary location secondary location blob endpoint and so on and so on so there are long list of properties which a storage account resource can return which you can utilize as an output or you can refer these output to a subsequent resource type in case if you want to i hope it makes sense if not don't worry about it we'll go into the detail when we go and discuss about provisioning the resource in azure with the terraform block demo i hope this has given you some idea how to read the terraform documentation to, in order to provision the resources if not let me know in the comment section i'll try to provide answer to your queries thank you